In alhamdulillah wa salat wa salam ala wa rasulullah. Again, today we're beginning a new topic. We're going to speak about innovation and we're going to speak about it in detail because so many Muslims today innovate. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, you know, he made the prediction uh, to his companions before he died. He said the later generations he said, my example, my sunnah, my example, my way of life will become corrupted by the later generation of Muslims. And it's happening today. The Muslims today, we are corrupting the sunnah. He said, they will corrupt my example to the point whereas anyone who follows my example will appear to be strange. And that's the way it is today. You know, we look on Facebook and social media and we find all these famous Muslims speaking about Islam. Most of them are innovators. Most of them are from, from crazy belief systems. And a lot of what they tell us is not correct. But we think of them as being the norm. And then when you do hear a person or see a person who is actually living and abiding by the Sunnah, you look at that person as being strange or that person's weird, that person's different, that person must be the one at fault or the one that's wrong. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said this would happen. Islam will become strange and the people who are living true Islam will become strangers. Well, today we're gonna speak about how this is so. And let's start here with the first PowerPoint slide. I want you guys to understand the religion of Islam. It is complete. What does that mean? That means the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam completed his mission before he died. Allah did not take his soul until he completed his mission. And not only did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam complete his mission, but Allah completed Islam as well. And that's what Allah means when he says in the Quran, in the interpretation of the meaning, this day have I perfected your religion for you and completed my favor upon you and have chosen for you Islam as your way of life. So that verse there, it makes it clear that the religion of Islam is complete. Allah did not forget to tell us anything. He did not leave anything out. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not forget to share information with us. So there is no need for anyone to add anything to this religion or to take anything away. In fact, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, there is nothing that Allah commands you to do that I have not already told you of. And there is nothing that Allah forbids you to do that I have not warned you of. So again, when you come upon Muslims today, and there's a lot of them out there, they'll say, oh, well, there's some things that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't tell us about, or that he didn't know about, or that he forgot to share with us. For, with us. for example, you'll find some men say, well, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't share with us or didn't know about makeup or he didn't know about fingernail polish, or he didn't know about women wearing pants or women, women speaking on the internet. No, he knew about everything. The things that Allah has not mentioned are concessions. And we need to learn to accept the concessions of Allah. And, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not forget or did not leave anything out from his message. And we have to understand that. Also, in another hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, there is nothing that will take you closer to paradise that I have not told you about. And there is nothing that will take you closer to hell that I have not warned you of. So again, you know, we can't make statements saying that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam forgot to tell us something or 
he didn't know about something. He told us all we need to know to get to paradise. And he told us everything we need to know that will take us to the hellfire. So thus the prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam fulfilled his trust that Allah placed on him. He made the lawful and the unlawful clear to us. And he even taught us the manners that we need to even answer the call of nature. He taught us how to interact with each other, how to have relations with our spouses and partners. He didn't forget anything. He taught us how to eat, how to sleep, how to bathe. So when you come upon Muslims out there who tell you that, oh, that he didn't know about everything, these Muslims are ill-informed, okay? Listen to what Allah says in the interpretation of the meaning. And we have revealed to you a book explaining everything. Here Allah is speaking about himself and the Quran. Allah has explained everything that we need to know in that book. Allah also says in the interpretation of the meaning, we have neglecting, we have neglected nothing in the book. In other words, Allah himself is letting us know that he did not leave anything out. So again, you know, when you come upon Muslims today, who say, oh, well, everything is not revealed in the book or everything is not known to us. These people are ignorant. Again, Allah teaches us how to worship him. He teaches us, you know, how to visit with others, how to dress, how to get along with others, how to live amongst the non-Muslims, how to live amongst each other. Again, Allah has not left anything out. So thus as Muslims, we have to stick to the correct way of doing things. And the correct way of doing things is to follow the example of our Prophet Muhammad. Let me explain to you guys, what does the Arabic word hadith mean? A lot of people get caught up in Arabic. When we mention the hadiths, we're talking about the things that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said and the things that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did. That's what hadiths refers to, the things he said and the things he did. Allah sent him as an example to us. The hadiths are an explanation of the Quran. And that's why the Prophet said, you will never understand the Quran until you understand my sunnah, my example. You understand the things I said, the things I did, because I was sent to teach you how to live and how to be. So again, as Muslims, we're supposed to follow his example and do things his way, not anyone else's way. In fact, listen to what Allah says in the interpretation of the meaning. Indeed, you have in the messenger of Allah an excellent example for the one who hopes in Allah and looks to the last day. In this beautiful verse, Allah is telling us, he's telling us if you truly want to have a good ending in the hereafter, if you truly are looking for paradise, if you truly are looking to have earned my honor, my pleasure, the way to that is through the example of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He didn't mention anyone else's example, just the prophets. He also said, so if you obey him, then you will be guided. So as Muslims, we should live each day of our lives following the example of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, doing things the way he taught us to do, praying like he taught us, supplicating like he taught us, celebrating what he taught us to celebrate, dressing the way he taught us to dress, bathing the way he taught us, this is what we should do if we are truly looking for a law and the, uh, and the last day to be in our favor. Okay? And again, as Muslims, we have to understand 
that there is no other way to salvation other than following the prophet's example. You can follow anybody else's example you want. You can be like Obama, follow Obama's example, Trump, or you can follow the example of uh, some famous scholar, some famous imam, but the way to salvation is not through any of these people. It's through the example of the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is why the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I have left behind with me two things. If you cling to them, you will never go astray. And they are the book of Allah which is the Quran and my example, which are the hadiths, the things he said and did. So again, this is why Muslims today have gone astray. This is why we're innovating. This is why you see Muslims celebrating Christmas, but they call it Muhammad day. This is why you see Muslims deviating away from the truth because they don't cling to the Quran and they don't cling to the hadiths. Instead, we're clinging to fatwa. Fatwa taken off the internet from famous personalities. And our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam warned against that too. He said there will appear in the later generations many people who will be able to, uh, to recite the Quran beautifully but it will never go past their throats. They will issue Islamic verdicts that go against my sayings, that go against my doings. Stick to my sayings, Think, stick to my doings and you will not be led astray. So again, that again applies to us today. Muslims today, instead of clinging and learning the Sunnah, they're clinging to fatwas off the internet written by men of today who are nobody, who are nothing. And many of those fatwas contradict what the Prophet ﷺ said. You're reading a fatwa right now that says it's okay to celebrate the Prophet's birthday. Where did the Prophet ﷺ say that's okay? Remember, Allah knows his creation better than we know ourselves. We're always looking to be like the Christians. We're looking for a Christmas. Allah knows that. Allah knows that. And as humans, we're evil by nature. You want to party. You want to celebrate. You want to hang up lights and Christmas trees and, and do what you're doing now. And that's what they're doing. They've replaced Christmas with Muhammad Day. Buying your children presents, decorating the house, it's ridiculous. Ridiculous. So this is why the prophet said, don't do to me. Don't do to me what they did to Jesus. And you Muslims today, you claim you have such love for him. You don't love the prophet because you've done to him what he asked you not to do. Also, the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, you will live to see great differences. So cling to my example and cling to the example of the rightly guided leaders that come after me, even if it be with your teeth. And when he made this statement, he was talking about Abu Bakr, Umar, Ali, and Uthman, the four. In another hadith, he said, the four who come after me, the four who come after me, because they were the best of this nation. Abu Bakr will be the first person to enter paradise after the prophet and then Umar and then Uthman, then Ali. So the prophet was saying, you're going to live to see a lot of differences after I die. But don't give in to that. Stick to my way. Follow my example and follow the example of Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and Ali. That's why we don't care about the caliphate after Ali. That's why the people of knowledge, when we teach about the Khalees, we only teach those four. Who cares about the Ottoman Empire and all that stuff? We don't care about that. It's the four, the rightly guided. And everything went downhill after those four. Muslims began to innovate, to deviate, to separate, to, and everything else.
Subhana Allah. Listen to what Imam Azuri once said. He said, cling to the Sunnah. Clinging to the Sunnah is to be saved. As Imam Malik said, like the Ark of Noah, whoever embarks upon it was saved. And whoever did not embark upon it was destroyed. And that's how it is with us. For those of us who clean, hold on to the example, hold on to living life the way the prophet did. We're the ones who are not destroyed. You may look at me and say, this woman is crazy. My God, this woman's voice is so strong. She sounds like a man. Guess what? This is how a woman is supposed to speak publicly. Allah says, oh, you believing women, do not soften or lower your voice when you are speaking publicly because you don't know the evil that runs in the heart of man. So when a woman speaks publicly, she's supposed to first of all be covered as I am covered. And her voice should be strong and firm, just like mine. Aisha was a powerful lecturer. Even Fatima, the daughter of the prophet, they say she could deliver a lecture and make you cry. Aisha's voice was so piercing that she strike the fear of Allah in your heart. And that's what Layla Nasheed was doing here. So again, but you look at me as being strange. I'm following the Sunnah. I'm strange. And I'm speaking about Allah, speaking about his prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and I'm giving you clear evidence from the prophet, not from some uh, mafab or something, but I'm strange. The other women you listen to, many of them, no sooner, no example, soft voices and all of that. And you take them as being, oh, sweet, normal, beautiful women. So again, you know, if you want to not be destroyed, if you want a law to be in your corner, if you want a good ending on the day of judgment, guys, stick to the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. No matter what other people say about you, no matter what other people think about you, you are here to please Allah, not anyone else. Listen to what Allah says in the interpretation of the meaning. And whoever contends with the messenger after guidance has been made clear to them, and follows a way other than the way of the true believers, we shall leave in the path he has chosen and land him in the hellfire. And what an evil destination. Listen to that Muslims. Listen to that Muslims. You claim to be Muslim. You claim to believe in Allah. You claim to have love for the prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but you're taking on ways other than the way of the prophet. You're innovating, deviating away from true Islam. Well, guess what? Allah will leave you on that path. And when you die, while you're in that grave, he will land you a seat in the hellfire. Subhana Allah. So again, guys, we have to be careful. We need to ask ourselves, is what I'm doing something that the prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did? Or if I'm doing something, am I doing it the way he did it? Okay. Is this something that the companions did? And that's another thing too. You want to follow the example of the prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but you have to also have the understanding of those companions, not the understanding of Sheikh come a dime a dozen. Not the understanding of Imam Godzilla. You have to have the understanding of those companions because Allah himself tells us in the Quran that they were the best of this nation. No one understood this religion or understands it better than they do. So that's the key too. You got two tasks as a Muslim. Number one, you got to cling to the example of our prophet. And number two, you need to have the understanding when you are performing your actions at the, uh, that the companions had, Subhana Allah, not anyone else's. And again, the prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam warned us that his Sunnah would become corrupted by us 
the later generations. This corruption was foretold. And when he told it, you know, the companions didn't understand. They were like, what do you mean they will corrupt your example? He said, well, it's going to happen. He said, I won't live to see them. He said, you may not live to see them. He said, but they will corrupt my sooner to the point whereas the ones who follow my sooner will become as strangers. And the one who protect and adhere to my sooner will be slandered and hated by many. Hello, welcome to the club of Sister Layla Nasheba. Hello, you don't see me sitting at your conferences giving lectures. I'm not liked too well because I am a person of the sunnah. I adhere to the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I am a protector of the sunnah. I am a protector of his sunnah. And I have the understanding of those companions of Aisha, of Umm Salama, of Atika, and all the companion, the female companions. I don't have the understanding of these famous popular women that you made popular today. I'm not on their level, okay? I'm on a wholly different level. It's all about the Sunnah, Subhanallah. Allah. But I'm looked at as being strange, slandered, hated by many, loved by Allah, hated by many. That's how it is. And it's not just me. There's other people at the Sunnah. I'm just using me as an example. Dr. Ibrahim Dramali, another one. Okay, they look at us as being strange. Oh, they're strange. They're kind of weird. Listen how they speak. The passion in Dramali's speak. Oh, he's crying. That's passion. Abu Bakr used to cry when he spoke about Allah. He couldn't even read the Quran without crying. You know, yes, uh, Dr. Jamali has that compassion and that passion that Abu Bakr had. I have the power that Aisha had. You wouldn't, if you don't like me, you would not like Aisha. Aisha didn't, oh, you talking about a woman of power. A woman who can make her voice. Do you guys know that Aisha led an army of over 300,000 men? Oh yes, you would hate Aisha if you hate me. She spoke like me, the passion, the power. Subhanallah. Um Salama, the passion, the power. Atika, the passion, the power. Zainab, the passion, the power. So we follow that way. We're not into the people of today in their way, okay? Also, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Islam began as something strange and it shall return as something strange just as it began. So Tuba to the strangers. For those of you who don't know what tuba is, tuba is the tree of clothing in paradise. The people of paradise, they don't have to worry about where their clothes come from. Their clothes will grow on trees. All they will have to do is reach up and pick a garment off the tree. So that's what the prophet was saying. Islam was strange and it began and in the ending, it will be strange too, but for those of us who stick to doing things his way, following his example, we'll be the ones blessed with paradise. And when he made this statement, uh, the companions again, they couldn't relate to this. They said, well, who, who will be the strangers? He said, the strangers are those that purify and correct what the people have corrupted of my sunnah. They're the people that purify and correct the belief system of those who corrupt my sunnah. They're the ones that speak out against the innovation, against the deviation that others do to this beautiful religion. SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah. And again, how does the sunnah become corrupted? through nothing other than innovation. Whenever we introduce into this beautiful, pure religion of Allah, new ways of worshiping him, 
that he did not teach us to do, that's how we destroy his religion. And that's how we corrupt the example of the prophet. This is what the Christians did. You know, they deviated away and innovated in the way that they worshiped the law. And that's why a Christian can never be a believer. In order to be a believer, you have to worship a law the way he legislated, not the way you want to. And also you corrupt the religion by making things unlawful that a law and the prophet did not make unlawful. And that's another thing that the Christians did. They made things unlawful when only a law has that right. Because you don't like something, you have no right or authority to make it haram. Because you don't like fingernail polish on women. You don't like women wearing pants. You don't like women with strong, powerful voices. You have no authority to make it haram because Allah likes it. Allah likes everything that he made lawful. Everything he made lawful is good and clean. Listen to what Allah says in the interpretation of the meaning. Do they have partners? that legislate some religion that Allah has not given permission for? That's what happens when you change things by making things lawful that Allah didn't make lawful. Then you're changing it. You've created a new way of life, a new religion that Allah didn't give you the authority or permission to do. Listen to what one of the companions again, as Muslims, you have two tasks to not only clean to and follow the Sunnah, but your second task is to have the understanding about this religion that those companions had. Listen to what Ibn Masood, who was one of the companions, listen to what he shared with the people about what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told him before he died. Ibn Masood said, how will it be when the trials and calamities of Allah overcome you in which the young will grow old and the old will grow senile and the people will take innovation to be the Sunnah. And when it changes, they will say the Sunnah has changed. He said, this will occur when your speakers of Islam are many and your true scholars are few and the rich ones amongst you are plenty and the trustworthy ones are few. He was speaking about today, the era about us. We have all these speakers of Islam, hundreds of them, look on Facebook, look on Instagram, giving lectures here, giving lectures there, and you guys made them famous. You guys have dubbed them with the term scholar. They're not true scholars. The true scholars are few. A real scholar would never innovate. A real scholar would never introduce something new into the way we worship Allah. A new scholar, a true scholar would never make a fatwa, an Islamic verdict that contradicts what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. The true scholars are so busy. They're so busy fighting against the innovation. They don't have time for social media. That's why you don't see them on Facebook. You don't see them on social media. They're in the mosques, they're in the communities. They're fighting, 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 trying to protect the Sunnah. And we wonder why we have so many trials, why we have coronavirus, why we have this. Again, the trials will overcome you. This is Allah's anger. Allah tells us that he sends calamities as a means of showing his anger and as a means of cleansing the earth of the corrupt people. You're deviating. You've made a Christmas for Muslims now, calling it Muhammad Day. 
and death day. You celebrate the prophet's mirage when he never told us to do that. So you're wondering why so many calamities are hitting the Muslim world and the Muslim non-world too. You have taken the innovation to be the Sunnah. You are corrupting and changing the Sunnah. And this is just the beginning. You want to complain about Corona. Corona, I'm here to tell you, is just the beginning. There's much, much more to come. So again, guys, what I want you all to do, this is an introduction. Today's lecture serves as an introduction as to what we're going to cover for the next week. We're going to speak about how to recognize if something is innovated or not. We're going to speak about the dangers, what happens when you do innovate. So I want everyone to join this class every day at 6 p.m. You know, and participate, be here for the quizzes because I am not just a lecturer. I am an Islamic teacher, a real one. Not only am I gonna sit here like I'm doing and teach you what the prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I'm gonna quiz you on it the same way he did. He would deliver lectures to his companions and then he'd come back and say, do you know what this means? When you hear those, read those hadiths, where he's saying, do you know what the major sins are? Do you know what Islam means? Do you know this? He, that's his way of quizzing the companions on what he taught them. So you want to be here at six o'clock every day and participate in my quizzes because that's the only way you're going to understand this information is by being quizzed on it. Okay, so be here tomorrow. On that note, we're going to stop right here for today. Inshallah, if you guys have any questions or comments, you can type them on the screen. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Ashadon la ilaha ila anta. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Any questions or any comments, uh, go ahead and uh, type them on the screen, inshallah.